Uh, yeah, this is Mamta Jain. I'm the founder of Some Potion, which uh, we are into upcycling of uh, fresh landfill destined fabric waste. So uh, in order to gobble up 200 kgs of uh, waste that I had uh, saved from Chennai landfills, I approached one weaver in Anantapur, uh, sorry, Anakaputur, suburb of Chennai, uh, because we, with weaving, I can gobble up the waste much faster. And I found the person very disgruntled uh, regarding the weaving industry. And uh, the, he's very unhappy and unhappy to take my work also. <laughs> So I have come here with multiple queries now. Just other day I met him. One, like how can government help people like him? Who It seems he is, he is a stalwart in weaving. It seems he was the first one to create hemp genes. I'm yet to Google and find figure out if he's right. His name is Sekar C. Uh, everybody knows him, it seems. People are telling me. So I'm new to this textile domain entirely. So this person, I want to help him out. I do have some, some connections like Ujwala Heritage Weaves also is one of my connections. And I would like to uh, connect these two people because I'm in Chennai. So I supply and demand both sides. I am, I am really finding myself handicapped though I went for one thing. Uh, thing is, how do we, uh, uh, is, there a, is there a study and research that has come up with reports on uh, environmental parameters or certifications or eco labeling of what gets created in a particular cluster across India. This is something I feel is a gap because whenever we say, see, I am connected to some United Nations groups, uh, some few forums, very few lot. So I can connect these kind of uh, weavers to them, but then I am, <laughs> I am handicapped in both ways. So, so, right, you can I'm, see that, look, the sector yeah. is like, is not the most, uh, what I would say, except in pockets, it's not a career option for youngsters to get into this particular sector, right? So it is not the first port of call. I have seen people in Upada when I started going there in 2004, a couple of master weaver's sons said that, look, I'm doing my MBA and I'm going to join a large company and move out of the sector because I'm not interested. So he moved out of, so he did MBA from somewhere um, uh, in IT and then got into TCS, worked in Australia for many years. And suddenly when Upada started to grow, he came back because he realized that being in his hometown, uh, uh, um, doing uh, weaving, which is his uh, family business, seemed to be just as attractive as being in uh, Australia, trying to work for a high-tech software company. Right? So not every cluster is able to provide that kind of uh, um, avenues for youngsters to get into family businesses. But this is where I guess we need to start rethinking our purpose in terms of how do you start to convert some of this into a much more, um, what I would say, um, uh, um, not I would say fashionable, but how do you start to get people to be designers at local level? How do you ensure that they use their skills for doing innovative things that like you are doing? How do you can upside fabric, you can upside plastics using the same techniques and then start to create a new category for market, right? So um, it's a very slow process, but there's one thing that handloom industry is, it has been entirely entrepreneurial. People have said it's going to die for the last hundred years. People have said handloom is going to be dead. And people have been writing epitaphs for this industry for over 100 years. Right? It's an extremely entrepreneurial industry, has been surviving just because it has been able to provide marketable products to uh, people. One great thing has been that women have been continuing to wear saris in India, unlike men who changed their dress by uh, uh, early uh, uh, 20th century. Um, but the industry has been extremely, extremely uh, innovative. You move from saris into dress material, into bed sheets, into whatever right. you want. You, right. It's been like unbelievably entrepreneurial, right? So while there will be disgruntled people at micro level, at a macro level, the industry has unbelievable entrepreneurial spirit that it will survive, right? Somehow, somewhere, I've started to believe that this is a sector for a long period of time, which is going to be around, right? So we're 21st century and we're still using archaic looms 
and they're coming up with great products. If they're not entrepreneurial, who is entrepreneurial? Right. right. So, yeah, yeah. So, so it's a slow process, and uh, you will find individuals who will not fit, who are between cracks, Mamta. But um, it's only people like you who have created new categories just by being there, hanging on, and hoping that the world will change. And it is. It is changing, changing very rapidly. So, wish you well. All uh, yeah, thank you. Also, Professor, it takes me to one more thing. In another session of uh, similar in, uh, IMB, I had asked Naga, sir, he, uh, what is the carbon emissions that we avoid with handicraft and hand, sorry, hand loom, basically. He gave me a link to go through. I have checked that document. It's a pretty long document, but I didn't find the information. So these kind of things will help like well, people like Ujwala. Right? We are academics. We, our audience is other academics. Our audience is not entrepreneurs, right? So, 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 which is why a lot of people, when Heritage was saying that, you know what, these guys, are, we should leave them together into their own world, which is true, because we are not really interested in the real world because we see with glasses. I see with theory, right? And we need to abstract. The reason why we need to use theory is we need to abstract. And when we abstract, we lose the sight of nuances. So, so, so you can't theorize, you can't abstract by keeping nuances. So okay. it is only by using these theories which will help us take decisions of future. So we are in a way limited by how academics has been done for centuries and that's how it moves. Uh, you probably would require more action research who are interested, but hardcore academic researchers are more interested in theory and what, where, where should I publish? Because that is our currency. If I publish in four top journals, I'll, I'll, I'll keep my job. right? So that's how it moves. And that's how our uh, world is, Mantra. So that is why you sometimes see us disconnected. This is for that reason. Yeah. I would like to join. Apologies for our, apologies for our uh, uh, from our entire colleagues, but that's how academics is. No, and no, I joined no, 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 no. Suresh, Ujwala, Ujwala, and Jasmine. Uh, you're right, absolutely right. In academic, actually uh, collating the industry-wise data or industry vertical data is not the job of academicians, Ma. A single academician sitting in IMB or IIT Madras will not be able to do that. It is the governmental institutions that have to collate the data because every entrepreneur or every business house will obviously give him data either through filing taxes or either for getting the licenses. So it is at the center level that they you need to collate and uh, systematically maintain the industry vertical data so that it helps even the academicians like us and business people like you. So this is, Crist is working in this direction. Crist IIT Madras is working in this direction. What data we are trying to collate is uh, the data that is coming up with the startup industry. So what industry verticals are having startups and what kind of data startup entrepreneurs look for in each industry, that kind of a data we are looking at it. Probably handlooms, I don't see much of a startups happening anywhere. Uh, that's, uh, we, while we completely agree with you, along with you, we are also looking for the data. The same data will be useful for us as Professor Suresh was telling. If the data is available for us, if it is available for you, you excel in business. And if it is available for us, we excel in making a theories or making a generalizations about what's happening in the industry. So the data is equally required for you and us, but who will do the data collection? It, it's not a one-man job. It has to be done collectively at the center level. We will surely try to. Uh, I let's mean, uh, let's, uh, let's pull up the sleeves. <laughs> let's pull up the sleeves. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, sure. All, all from our side, we will try to definitely keep on rising up the voice and ask for the data. And from your side also, you can do that. True. And if we join the hands, it will be fantastic. It will, it will be a win-win. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to take much time, but I had one more thing to add. Like you said just now, co-optex. There is yeah. no no marketing and all. In yeah. Chennai, we have Kalakshetra, we have Dakshina Chitra. Not any, none of the school kids are taken there. We need to emphasize these things. Correct. Absolutely. Very good point, Mamta. At the end of the day, right? What we need to do is to educate people about this industry because who tells 
somebody that this is a better watch, Rolex is a better watch than some other watch, right? Rolex tells us, actually, we don't need this watch. In a way, probably you should accuse us where we said not I it is, I am where you tell people that this is how you market product. So we yeah. need <laughs> narratives that people would like to uh, connect to, right? So, so it is, you, you, you're completely right, storytelling, market creation, category creation. So we need to study that and Handloom has done quite a bit of it. It has been done without knowing how to do it, but we need to, as you rightly said, get youngsters into it, start getting them to understand what is Khadi, what is Handloom, what is Ambar Charka, what is this Charka. So obviously, if you start to know what Quartz is, what um, Rolex is doing, what Seco is doing, they are telling us we need to get into the space of educating people. And uh, I think it's going to happen. It's going to happen because time is rife and there are enough and more entrepreneurs like you who like to be in this sector. And more importantly, all these weavers and craftsmen are not very far and they are also very entrepreneurial. So everybody is on mobile phone. I think the time is right for something like that to be done. And then as uh, uh, Professor Krishnaprasanna is saying, the data will also come. Maybe CRED will give us data. Maybe uh, Amazon will give us data because people are getting there. Uh, maybe Etsy will give us data because people are selling there, right? So we should be able to think up of a clever ways of getting this data, yeah. So Navneeta Krishnan, you have, you have had your hand up for long. I don't know if you still have the question. Yeah, yeah, I still have the question. Thanks, uh, Dr. Suresh. It was uh, very informative about the handloom sector. My question is uh, purely an academic-based uh, question. I just wanted to know in the handloom sector, since you've been studying it for quite some time, has any study been done towards the survival strategies or what or how does handloom industry, what risks and uncertainties they face and how they have overcome this to survive? Have you seen any work or is it a potential area to do a research? No, certainly it's a potential area to work. There are two reasons why I think uh, it survives. One, it survives because they're able to get market information better. So the systems of identifying what market wants, their information system is very, very good. And nobody has... First of all, they don't, getting data is very difficult, right? It is hardcore, qualitative. Yeah. You need to go to them, turn up multiple times. But if you go to Nalli and spend time, they'll probably give you, as in they'll give access to 300, 400 viewers that work for them in terms of how do they end up having a better product? Because the uncertainty that they have is, will green color with red border, will it sell better than blue color with black border, right? So, so, so if you understand the uncertainty is uncertainty, uncertainty, there are two uncertainties. One, whether my product will sell and two, whether that store owner will give my credit back. Oh, okay. hmm. Because you, you could have store owners because half the store is actually on credit. So, okay. so, so the uncertainty, so the market level uncertainty in terms of what sells, they have certain strategies which we need to unearth them. They also have strategies to figure out whether the partner that you're working with, what we call as egocentric, uh, altercentric uncertainty. I am not sure about whether you will survive. So how do I find out as a producer, how, how do I work on my altercentric uncertainty in order to figure out you are the person that I should work with and not Arishi? Right, so 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 they do a lot of these judgment calls. Uh, so some of it is behavioral, some of it is creative, some of it is sheer knowledge that percolates through uh, 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 the system in terms of what works, what doesn't work. But the tons of uncertainty that they deal with, and again, a great place to study handling uncertainty, market uncertainties, and they're doing it without any formal system. Right. Okay. If, if you look at Benetton, they have their own system. So if you look at Fab India, they have their own system. If you if you look at Louis Vuitton, they have their own system. But Handloom doesn't. Right. So mm -hmm. so, so 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 it's a great place to test some of these uncertainty decision making rules. Right. How are they taking decisions? What are the heuristics they use for decision making? Because at the end of the day, if you don't sell your sari, your inventory is stuck. Yeah. That 3,000 rupees that you invested in it is stuck. So they, they they survive on rotation. So how do they handle 
cash flows and uh, um, uh, uh, churn. So how do they churn the capital, right? All of these have a role to play. And from a finance point of view, from a behavioral point of view, from an uncertainty point of view, it's a great sector to study. And all of these guys are in our neighborhood and we ignore them, right? We just have to walk up to Nalli and then tell him because many of them are very clever because weavers are inherently clever because they can imagine a sari even before it's made, right? They're imagining oh. features on a sari if it's before it's made. The cognitive capabilities are through the roof. So when you go tell them, this is what I'm studying, they understand the theory very quickly because intuitively they know markets. Mm -hmm. So they could tell me in terms of my theory, right? They don't understand the constructs, but they know the logic. Uh, so, so the bottom line that I have taken from this is that uh, adequate uh, academic research has not been done in this uh, particular area and, and it's a uh, potential virgin area to uh, venture into. Okay. Yes. Yes. And Thank you. for another reason, world is now also realizing that a lot of work is in the informal sector. So the formal sector only has a tiny segment in terms of employment. So there are a couple of papers, a couple of Every few years, there is an urge from strategic management journal, journal of business venturing, academy of management review saying that, you know what, we need to figure out how the system works, right? So how does a product move from formal to informal to formal to informal, right? So, 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 so you buy raw material from the formal, you give it to a weaver, it is informal, you take the formal product, and then sell it for uh, sell it take this informal product and sell it in the formal market so this interplay of moving towards formal and informal markets is again something that scholars have been asking for we don't know how it happens right so there's a, there, there are a couple of papers in uh, amj just as a necessity entrepreneurship uh, um, uh, amr as papers on necessity entrepreneurship and some of this can fit in that necessity entrepreneurship construct um, which the latest journals are asking for. Thank you. Thank, thanks a lot, uh, Professor Suresh. That was quite uh, educative and informative. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Professor Suresh. On behalf of IIT Madras, as well as rest IIT Madras, and on my own behalf, it's very, you know, lively interactions we had. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would have loved to be in Chennai. Chennai is my most favorite town. Most welcome, uh, um, sir. Most welcome to the campus. Yeah, we, we Professor Suresh. Uh, yeah. Good evening, sir. I have a quick question. Last question, probably. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Sir, uh, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with us. Right. And my question is regarding digital marketplaces and their requirement in the handloom sector. Right. So uh, I'm basically a tech startup founder in Delhi, and I'm also an academic researcher. So my question is from the um, you know, uh, purely academic perspective, because I work on this uh, platform economy domain. I have been like studying a lot of platforms, digital platforms, I won't name them here, but I am really curious to learn from you. Uh, what are your observations about the, the, the space, the digital market space place right now for specifically for handloom? So for me, I look at it as an enabler of D2C economy, right? So, so, so weavers can get on to, to figure out what does the market want directly. And so to an extent right now, uh, we have intermediaries between the producers and the consumers. So you have master weavers, you have NGOs, you have so social enterprises, you have cooperatives, because weavers have never been in touch with uh, uh, their consumers for many decades now because the market is moving away, away from their pr production. So here is an opportunity for them to get back and figure out what the market wants directly, right? And, and so the cost of finding customers is going to go down because the curation of, let's say, the reason why you go to Nalli because the curation of the saris is the best there. Mm -hmm. So he has accumulated knowledge over like, let's say decades of man years to figure out what sells, right? So mm -hmm. that he's able to figure, tell weavers saying that do this, don't do this. And that knowledge possibility is available now. 
so in order for us to play this game on online we need to start creating more stories mm -hmm. how do you create narratives so how do you create categories so how do you create this newer category right maybe you talk about authentic um silk sari that was made during krishna devaraya time because i spent time looking at a particular text and created this uh, wonderful piece so how do you create categories so how are categories being created so you could you could you could draw from uh, how categories have been done in wine how been category done in cuisine how have categories been done in watches so there is a lot of work on category creation in terms in sociology and so how 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 could we now use that and create categories by some of these producers right so i think information system theories i haven't studied platform theories from strategy i haven't studied those but they will come in useful for from an entrepreneurship perspective i mm -hmm. think proximity to the consumers will enable them to come up with much more marketable products mm -hmm. and plus the network effect of the marketplace will come in will play help you will help you get the yeah. right kind of consumers but maybe they will spin off i think currently you have large marketplaces where everybody is going in but maybe there will be segmented marketplaces where you go only for that high end consumer high end handloom product which is so authentic where you would not get anywhere else right mm -hmm. limited so so the reason why handloom can survive is because you can have a limited uh, edition uh, product which is unique in the world so all those kind of narratives that you could create in orders in order to create new opportunities for the space can happen mm -hmm. because of this proximity to consumers right and i think and i think i i've seen that right early on i've seen lots of entrepreneurs trying to put stuff up uh, in terms of selling their products but off late i've seen weavers from mangal uh, weavers from mangalgiri put up instagram weavers from uh, maheshwar put up instagram banaras put up instagrams right so they're able to get there and be there and do it and that is possible only because of the technology and the ease with which they can mm -hmm. reach out the consumers right so right. um early days of uh, new space for handlooms and i think i and i think some of the viewers will be enabled by this but they need to understand how the medium works mm -hmm. yeah right so lots of information system studies are required for the handloom industry again not being done not being done like uh, management yeah. scholars from information system can start to that's right i I've, i've been looking for this kind of literature quite some time and it's very hard do on top of your mind do you have any literature you will suggest uh me uh to look into it's just a random question you, you don't have to answer at, right away like some of the category creation work by high grave rao and uh, so he worked on haute cuisine in france um so if you start there category creation uh, uh if you look at uh, um so how have there's quite a bit of work by hanan haigrev rao on uh, category creation you could look mm -hmm. at that because i believe uh, there's a paper by when cinderella became the queen on how grappa which was a local drink ended up competing with whiskey right so so that is a asq paper if you know uh -huh. it's a pretty hard yeah. journey to get into right so that could be a wonderful narrative so how did grappa which is a local thara ended up uh, competing with uh, whiskey right and so they captured had the story and it's a very interesting so both from a narrative and also from the academic purpose of a uh, theorizing right so, great yeah so i don't remember the uh, scholar right now but but the but these are enough keywords i'll thank you so much actually, for pointing me in the right direction scholar when cinderella became the queen it's a very easy thing to remember yeah 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 absolutely i just wrote it down thank you so much yeah hanan michael hanan and high grave rao have done some work mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. thank you thank you professor you are welcome 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 sir uh so thank you very much for giving me this opportunity and um yeah i think it's time for me to continue my work on handloom because i actually haven't been doing this for quite some time uh, so this was an opportunity for me to go look back at so many of my data that i've been having which i haven't done much um but uh, uh, 
Aishi said that don't do too much, too much 3D building. So I kind of stayed away. Uh, but it was good, I guess. It was a right ni nice mix of practitioners and academics, right? So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And hope to see you sometime. <laughs>